Hey guys, we have an iPhone 11 Pro in here today. Um, it came in uh, for baseband issues, so the customer can't uh, make or receive calls. It says um, searching, even though there's no SIM card in the device. And when you go into settings, general about, there's no modem firmware. Uh, so I'll start by why well, we've already split the board here. Um, initially, I thought it was a case of uh, loose connection with the interposer, but that is seems to be not the case. So I decided to do a video on it. Um, I'll switch to the overhead camera view and I'll show you first what the problem is. So we can grab our jig, testing jig. This is for iPhone 11, put it aside. This is for iPhone 11 Pro. So we'll put the bottom half of the board, put this piece in, okay, and we'll lock it in place. All right, grab our DC power supply. Okay. Grab a testing screen. Perfect. And turn on DC power supply. And we are going to switch over to the display screen quickly. Just gonna search power, power key connection. Uh, switch to the other side. So on J4300 pin 12, we're going to short it to ground and that will prompt the device to boot. Okay, so the device should be booting now. Got the Apple logo on screen. All right, so we go to settings general about, you can see that we're missing modem firmware and it's searching despite there being no SIM card in the phone. See, it says searching right there. And right here where it says modem firmware, we should have a value, but it's completely blank. I'm gonna turn off the DC power supply Disconnect the testing screen. Disconnect the battery lead. And open up the jig. So normally with this kind of issue, we, um, we normally find that the top board has disconnected from the bottom board after an impact or the board has become bent and when we desolder the two boards, clean up each of the pads and put in the testing jig to ensure connection, uh, it solves the issue and we know that we can just reball the middle layer. Uh, but in this case, uh, the board actually looked perfect. It wasn't bent or anything. Um, and in the testing jig, it still is not working. So we know that uh, something else is the cause. So we're going to try to diagnose and repair this issue, which is likely going to be on the bottom board. Um, so to start, I'm going to just put this board into a fixture. I'm going to grab our multimeter. And let's switch to the microscope view. So, at first glance, the board looks great. So our first uh, suspect is going to be baseband PMU, which is this chip here. I'm going to start just by taking some readings around the chip. 
see if there's any obvious shorts. So we're going to use diode mode. Just going to go red probe on ground, and we're going to poke around with our black probe here. All right, so. Looks good, looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. So right here we actually find a full short, short circuit. Okay. So let's switch over to the display screen. Switch over to this side. Let's orientate the board like we have it. Okay. So we just found a short on C418K, which is VRF flow 1v15. So let's try and find out now where this line can be shorting to ground. Um, so it could be shorting here on the cap we measured. There's a cap beside it. And we have over here. Where does this go? Oh, okay. So on this side of the coil, it just goes right back to baseband PMU. And on this side of the coil, it goes to UCXCVR, which is the intermediate frequency IC. And there are a few caps around it where we can also have a short. It's also a possibility that there is an internal short on one of the, these chips. So what we're going to do next is um, just do a quick visual inspection to see if any of these caps look discolored. They do not. So at this point, I'm just going to inject voltage. Um, and I'm going to see where the problem is. All right, so I, I can just connect a black probe here on the SIM card reader. Just like that. And then on the red probe, I can connect this fine tip lead. And we can just inject right there. Perfect. I'll grab the thermal camera. We're going to switch the DC power supply to, we're just going to start at 0.7 volts. All right, let's see what we get. I'm going to go and inject the voltage. Not seeing anything light up, so I'm just going to change the, the settings here. Still nothing lighting up, so let's increase our voltage, we'll go right to one volt. Still got nothing lining up. All right, so now that we changed the settings on the thermal view, we actually see uh, the intermediate frequency I see looks like it's getting hot. Yeah. 
Let's see there. <clears throat> so it looks like it might be an internal short with the intermediate frequency IC chip. All right, so <clears throat> after some testing, it looks like we've narrowed it down to the intermediate frequency IC chip uh, is internally short to ground. So we're going to proceed with uh, removing the chip and installing a new one. Hopefully that solves our issue. That's a good sign, it says no SIM card installed. Head over to settings, general about. And we can see here that modem firmware has been restored. If we look there, it says no SIM. So this, is, uh, this was a successful repair. Um, this phone came in with the baseband issue. Uh, it was searching for service despite there being no card in the phone. Um, and there was no f modem firmware present. Um, it ended up being the intermediate frequency IC was shorted internally. Um, I'm going to switch over to the display screen. We'll run a recap of the repair. Um, <clears throat> so normally with service, it, service issues on any of these sandwich board devices. Um, it's a problem with the uh, connection between the top and bottom board because the phone took an impact and became warped and the uh, board disconnects. And the bottom board right here is full of uh, Wi-Fi, baseband, Bluetooth. So when that happens, you'll see those kinds of issues. No Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, no service. Um, in this case, um, the phone wasn't visibly bent or anything. After we separated the top and bottom board and put them into a testing jig, there was still no service. And that told us that it was not actually a problem with the connection between the two boards, but a problem with the baseband circuit itself. Um, so we checked the bottom board first, which is most likely the root cause of the problem. Not to say that the problem couldn't be on the top board. We've seen problems with uh, these lines being short, causing service issues. So in this case, uh, the first thing we did was um, suspect maybe the baseband PMU to be the issue, which is what powers the baseband circuit on the phone. That's this chip here. So we measured around it, <coughs> and we actually found a full short on this capacitor, C418K. Um, we then determined where that line can be shorting to ground, uh, it could be any of these capacitors or these chips. So we injected voltage and we found that uh, the intermediate frequency IC chip was getting hot. So um, at that point, we knew to replace the chip. We pulled it, grabbed a new chip, reballed it uh, so that we can install it with less heat because we do have baseband CPU very close by. We don't want to float it and then have to pull and reball that chip as well. So yeah, installing that new intermediate frequency IC chip solved the problem. The phone is fully functional. We are going to finish up the repair by reballing the top and bottom board and then running some final tests, then getting it back to the customer. I hope you learned something in today's video. Please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next on the channel. Um, if you're new, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.